it's 2025 and you're thinking of upgrading to a used RTX 3070. Now, given the limited VRAM of this GPU, only 8 gigabyte, is this actually a good choice? Or should you go for something newer like the budget 12 gigabyte card from Intel, the P580? Today, we'll revisit the RTX 3070 and we'll run it on multiple live service games to see if this is still capable. We're going to game at 4040p and for you 1080p gamers, we're also going to compare this on both resolutions. And before we start, here's all our specs and here's all our testing methodology and configuration. Okay, let's go. Let's kick things off with 1440p gameplay across a variety of live service games. We've optimized our settings for competitive play and enabled upscaling in any title that supports it to get the best performance. First up, we have Warzone. The RTX 3070 delivers a solid performance here, running at an impressive 170 FPS with decent lows. We're utilizing DLSS quality for that extra performance, and I'd highly recommend that you enable it at 1440p. It really makes a difference. Even though we're GPU bound here, the card is only pulling around 5 gigabytes of VRAM, leaving plenty of headroom. Next up is Apex Legends. This game is very well optimized and the 3070 handles it like a breeze. The frame times are smooth and in intense action scenes, you'll be pushing around 220 FPS. Once again, we're GPU bound, but honestly, there are no complaints here. The gameplay is just that good. Now, let's dive into some newer titles. In Delta Force, which showcases a full-scale 64-player battle, the RTX 3070 performs admirably with DLSS enabled at 4040p, even with explosions and effects going on everywhere we're getting 200 plus fps with solid lows the power draw here ramps up to about 240 watts so it's clear that the gpu is working hard one thing to keep in mind you might notice some stuttering in the first round but it smooths out during mid game and path of exile 2 we do see some limitations of the rtx 3070 despite that it's still delivering good performance with DLS is on, you'll hit around 120 FPS even during hectic mob fights and heavy effects. Frame times are stable and experience is smooth overall. Over in Fortnite's performance mode, the RTX 3070 crushes it. Expect frame rates well over 200 with occasional frame time spikes that are typical for Fortnite. While we are not GPU bound here, the RTX 3070 is pulling around 230 watts of power, so it's still working pretty hard. Now, for Valorant, it's a different story. The RTX 3070 absolutely sails through this one, hitting a jaw-dropping 600 to 700 FPS. It'll be interesting to see how much we can push this when we drop to 1080p later on but for now it's clear that this card has no trouble in a game like this even on high resolutions pubg also fares very well on the rtx 3070 the experience is smooth with the gpu utilization hovering around 95 percent depending on the scene even in these intense situations with smokes and chaos you're still getting close to about 200 fps which is quite impressive in arena breakout infinite the rtx 3070 delivers mostly stable performance as well on open roads you can expect around 170 fps with dlss is enabled however once the action picks up you might experience some occasional stuttering this is normal for the game especially at the start but the performance do improve significantly as things begin to settle down in Helldivers 2, we're definitely seeing some bottlenecking with the RTX 3070, GPU bound of course, especially during the Super Helldive against the squids. At medium settings with ultra quality render scaling, you're looking at around 80 FPS. VRAM usage gets close to 6 gigabytes, which is near the gas limit, but the performance is still entirely playable. All right, let's dive into some scaling tests and see how the RTX 3070 performs at 1080p compared to 1440p. Now, if you are a 1080p gamer, you might be curious about how much of a performance bump you'll get with this card. First up is 
Warzone at 1080p native, you'll see around 20 FPS on average gain over the 1440p with DLCs and a slight improvement in the lows compared to 1440p. This trend holds true during the firing benchmark as well. That said, if you're gaming on a 1440p monitor, I'd still recommend sticking with 1440p in this game. That added visibility can make a whole lot of difference in Warzone. And Apex Legends dropping to 1080p brings a solid 20% increase in FPS is during action heavy scenes that's a noticeable boost and you'll also see more stable performance the gap increases a bit further when you're in static scenes for fortnite's performance mode 1080p offers a slight fps boost with marginally better lows but honestly the difference here isn't that significant even at 1440p the gap isn't huge we'll check again when we look at the b580 later on to see if there's any change or how big the gap is between these two guys moving on to valorant going down to 1080p gives you a small bump in average fps however when the action ramps up you'll notice that the more gpu intensive 1440p setup offers greater stability with fewer fluctuations in performance now let's talk about PUBG, this is where the 1080p really shines. You gain nearly 90 FPS with the lower resolution and that advantage carries through in the mortar benchmark as well. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you've got a 1440p monitor, it is still worth sticking with a higher resolution in games like PUBG because you will need that visibility and you will gain that visibility with a higher resolution. In Helldivers 2, there's only about an 8% difference between the two resolutions. Keep in mind that at 4040p we are using ultra quality upscaling while at 1080p we're just running native resolution. The performance difference is minimal with a slight reduction in GPU load at 1080p. And Path of XL2 dropping down to 1080p provides a substantial boost netting you about 40 more FPS. That's a significant lead over the 4040p. In both cases you're going to be GPU bottleneck but 1080p definitely gives you more of that headroom for much higher frames. Now let's compare the RTX 3070 against the B580, a newer 12GB GPU from Intel which offers a lot for much less. Let's see if this is worth considering against a used RTX 3070. As I've said before, obviously the RTX 3070 should be faster than the B580. But our objective here is to see if the gap is small enough to consider a newer 12GB card instead of the older 3070 which may have been used in mining operations if you purchase this used. Okay, first up is Warzone. This one's a no contest. Just look at that significant difference between the two cards. This is a clear win for the 3070 whether we are on the running or on the firing benchmark. I think the only saving grace for the B580 here is its power consumption. In Apex Legends, it's not as bad as Warzone. It's about 11% difference between the two cards. However, here's the kicker. Just look at how Intel is much more stable on this heavy action scene compared to the RTX 3070. On static scenes, yeah, that's a pure win for the Nvidia card, but this one, the heavy action scenes, just different. In Fortnite, the performance isn't that high in terms of 1% lows. The average FPS still goes to the Nvidia card, but the 0.1% lows definitely goes to the Intel GPU, and we are GPU bottleneck on both of these cards. Valorant shows a commendable lead in favor of the RTX 3070. We're clearly GPU bound here, and you would see why the 3070 just takes the cake here. When we go into heavy action scenes, the 3070 continues with this lead, especially on the lows. PUBG is quite surprising. The Intel GPU has better lows here compared to our Nvidia card on the running benchmark. When we move into the mortar scene, they are very close to each other with B580 just slightly leading on the lows once again. Helldivers 2 isn't very good for the Intel GPU. We are GPU bottleneck here for both cards and this is where the 3070 just pulls ahead regardless of what scene we're on, whether we are on the Gatling benchmark, the firing benchmark, or the stratagem benchmark. It's a clear win for the 3070. Lastly, we have Path of Exile 2 and in this game, the Intel B580 performs really poorly. Like, 
it's really bad you can see that the 3070 just demolishes the b580 here intel definitely needs to iron out their performance in this game because it's just bad don't get me wrong it's playable but the 3070 is just a much better experience on our previous videos you guys really like uh, chats and, and even though i've seen that these chats don't really show the big picture as you really need to know when those status occur and how critical they are for these live service games but anyway since you guys like those ones here's the average fps difference between the two cats the rtx 3070 is about 28 percent better compared to the p580 shocking i know well on our 1% lows, the RTX 3070 is about 29% faster compared to the B580. However, I do note that there are some games we're in. The B580 is actually much faster in terms of the lows compared to the RTX 3070. And if you're interested in more of our B580 testings, we actually tested this against NVIDIA's entry-level GPU, the RTX 4060, and the results were quite surprising i know i know there's been a lot of talks recently about using a weaker cpu which is going to affect the b580's performance on games this video however shows the real world difference even if you're using a powerful cpu so click this video right here i'll see you guys over there